Santa boys. Glacier National Park is regarded by many as the crown jewel of national parks in the United States of America. The early Native Americans referred to the mountains in this region as the backbone of the world. Located in the northwestern region of Montana, Glacier National Park is situated just below the Canadian border and is comprised of over 800,000 acres of land. The national park has earned its name from the many huge glaciers that have formed in and around the mountains and lakes. In the late 1800s, an explorer and conservationist, George Grinnell, spent two decades making every effort to conserve the land. In 1910, a bill was introduced to U.S. Congress which designated the area as a national park and signed into action by President William Howard Taft. In the motorcycle community, the Going to the Sun Road is regarded as one of the top destinations for motorcyclists in the country. This road that travels through the sun is the main vein that takes visitors through the heart of the Glacier National Park. One of my life goals is to ride a motorcycle on the top 10 best roads in America. This video is a documentation of me checking another one off the list. I made the trip with two of my best friends, Chris and Daniel, who also happen to be my cousins, and we all got to bring our wives along for the ride. In the motorcycle world, usually people make excuses to get on their bike and log as many miles as possible. At this point in my life though, when time seems to be the most valuable asset, we decided to jump on a plane and fly to Missoula, Montana. landed here in Missoula, Montana, guys. We had to stop off at Famous Dave's, get some barbecue here. So after this, we're gonna head over to Grizzly Harley Davidson, pick up the bikes. Right now we're waiting for Daniel and Michelle to show up. They're driving up from Utah. So, we have some more food here. <laughs> Just got to Grizzly Harley Davidson here. I'm thinking these are probably our rides right here. So we're picking up the bikes here. So we met up with uh, Daniel. You guys probably remember <laughs> Daniel from our Zion trip. So we brought our wives this time. You guys will see them in a minute, but uh, we're picking up our Roguelide Limiteds, 21 mile a year. So we're gonna be going through Glacier National Park. Pretty stoked on this. In comfort. Full comfort. You know, when we take the ladies, we give them the royal thrones, you know? So we got the best of the best, most comfortable bikes. Grizzly Harley is really cool. Shout out to Grizzly Harley Davidson, really nice people here. But um, yeah, we're gonna go up to, what is it, Whitefish or something like that? Head up to Whitefish, stay in there, and then roll into the glacier tomorrow, right? Yep, yep. And we're gonna meet Chris and Amanda, our other cousins. And so the three of us, well, the three parties, the three couples are gonna be going into Glacier National Park tomorrow. So I was pretty stoked on it. <laughs> <laughs> So we saddled up, jumped on the Harleys, and began our 130 mile trek from Missoula up to Whitefish, where we were gonna stay for the next few nights in our Airbnb.
With most motorcycle trips, it seems like there's a lot of mileage and road you have to cover to get to the destination where you start enjoying the ride. Especially in Southern California where there's a lot of long straight roads that are out in the desert, just ugly places that really aren't the most desirable places to ride. However, with Montana, it seems like right when we got on the bike, the roads were very scenic. We traveled next to lakes, through alpine trees, just these open two-lane highways that were absolutely beautiful. So in a sense, we didn't have the long grind to get to the good stuff. However, this was just the tip of the iceberg in terms of great scenic riding we had in store for us on the trip. The weather is always a big component to take into consideration whenever planning a big motorcycle trip. Glacier National Park was actually our plan B. We had originally planned to go to Tahoe, but because of the Caldor fires, we had to call it off and scramble for a different plan. We got kind of lucky on this trip. I think every place in the world has its seasons, the good ones and the bad ones. However, this trip, we kind of timed it just right, where it was just after the peak season in summer, but it was the window right before it started to get really cold. And I don't know what the rain is typically like up here, but I can only imagine that it's usually on and off all year long because we did get plenty of rain, but it was never really like a big steady downpour. We just got little pockets of rain here and there. It was just enough rain to add a little bit of variety and spice to the overall trip. Me personally, I think there was some genius and a little bit of luck in coming in the off season. I'd trade away the crowds for a little bit of bad weather any day of the week. We ended up arriving in the second week in September. And like most national parks, Glacier can get really crowded, especially in the summer season. And when your primary focus is on traveling the main roadway, the less people, the better. When we showed up to Whitefish, we found that Chris and Amanda had already arrived. The first thing Chris did was take his bike off the trailer and begin washing it. There's this obsessive compulsive gene that runs in my family. A lot of us in my family are neat freaks. It's almost like I enjoy riding my motorcycle more when I know that it's spotless clean. The motto is, you take care of your machine and it'll take care of you. Whitefish ended up being like a ski town. We rode a few miles up this windy mountain pass and arrived at the base of some ski slopes. Aubrey and Michelle breaking into somebody's hot tub over there. Oh, Michelle's cleaning it too. How about that? It's good. You might have to borrow that tonight. <laughs> How'd it come out, Michelle? Delicious. All right. Pollo asado. So far, I'm a big fan. Haven't even tasted it yet. All right, I'm so good. Thank you. Good taste. So we're starting off the day with some breakfast here. Just got on the bikes this morning. Now we're gonna stop off at Huck's here, grab some breakfast. I think we're in like downtown Whitefish area. So kind of a cool little western style town a little bit hitting our first gas up here So all the planning, preparation, and traveling had led us to this point. Daniel and I were on the 2021 model year Road Glide Limiteds, and Chris was on his 2020 Road King Special. So the plan was to make the full loop around the national park. We were going to enter in via West Glacier, head up around the Going to the Sun Road, circle back on the east side via Highway 89, then pick up 49 down to Highway 2 and take that west and make the full loop back around to West Glacier. We had three days in the park, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so we planned on experiencing the park a little bit different each day. The first day primarily was just to cover as much ground as possible and see the most that we could on the Harleys. Then the next day we we're going to try to experience some of the hiking trails and the lakes and things like that. Then the third day on Sunday we were going to try to make it a combination of both.
officially entering into the park here, Glacier National Park. Had to get the, the picture in front of the sign with everybody and the bikes and everything. So I think weather's looking pretty good. It's a little bit smoky still. We got a lot of the smoke coming in, but I think it should still be good. We got a professional photographer going to work now. Check me out, guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really. No, but really, like, totally check me out. <laughs> Hashtag Dan and Shell. We got a great channel, traveling channel. Looking forward to today, that's for sure, man. Got the alpine vibe going on here. Mountainous alpine vibe. Tons of greenery. One of the raddest features about glaciers is all the many lakes that are scattered throughout the national park. There's tons of little mini lakes hidden in the crevices in between the mountains and tucked away in the different trail system throughout the park. One of the biggest lakes is Lake McDonald. Like I said, we broke this trip up into three days and after driving by it on the first day and admiring it from the road, the second day we decided to stop at Lake McDonald Lodge and grab a couple boats and shoot out on the lake for an hour. Lake McDonald's probably one of the cleanest, clearest lakes I've ever been on in my life. It's like no matter where you were on the lake, you could look down and see the bottom. You combine that with the multicolored nature of the rocks, and it almost looked like the bottom of a fish tank. And the best part is, we had the whole lake to ourselves. We had a very loose itinerary for this trip. I think the only solid plans we had were to ride Harleys up and over the road to the sun. But that's typically how I like to do things. Maybe have 30 or 40% planned and then the rest just improvisation. Like I said, our first day, we basically rode through the entire park and scouted out the places that we wanted to come back and check out. So hitting up Lake McDonald our second day turned out to be perfect because the rain was a little bit heavier that day as well. And if I can avoid heavy rain on the motorcycles, I definitely will. So the going to the sun road gets to a point where it starts to narrow a little bit and the larger vehicles aren't allowed to go past a certain point. There's a parking lot there. So a lot of people are either turning around or parking their vehicles. So there's a little bit of congestion. But once you get past that point, that's when things really start to get good. You start to rise in elevation really quickly. You're greeted with this sheer rock face wall on one side of the lane. And on the other side of the two lane highway, you've got these huge drop offs with amazing vistas. This is the part of the ride where Glacier National Park really starts to flex its nature muscles and things start to get really good.
After riding for a bit, we decided to pull over, grab a snack, and check out some of the lookouts. I also wanted to check with Aubrey and Michelle and see how they were liking the ultra plush seating and the Rogue Glide Limiteds. I'm a little bit worried that now Aubrey's never going to want to jump back on my streak light again after riding in that thing. So, in the middle of Glacier Park here, decided to take a pit stop, grab a protein bar. Just went through this epic tunnel through the side of this granite cliff here. And uh, yeah, things are going good so far. We thought it was going to be freezing up here, but it turned out to be like perfect weather actually. Get out of the road here so I can run over. Weather's probably like in the 60s today. We got these rad like tour bus things going around today. These red cars going around. So yeah, this place is pretty epic. Yeah, we're like on the top, like the side of this cliff. Got a bunch of like alpine trees and stuff in the background. Daniel, how are you liking the Rogue Glide Limited? Rogue Glide Limited? <clears throat> I love it. As soon as I offload my old bike, <laughs> coming into the shop, dude, and we're gonna build a Rogue Glide Limited. I love it. Ro you gonna do a Rogue Glide Limited or just like a Rogue Glide Special? We maybe do the Rogue Glide Special. I love the tour pack that Chris has up here. Tour pack, I don't know that I would do that long term. But yeah. Shelter likes it, I think. How you liking the comfort back there, ladies? Oh, it's unbeatable. <laughs> Luxury. <laughs> Luxury? Living in luxury. Luxury at its finest. Yes. I feel like I'm on a lazy boy. Sitting upon a throne. <laughs> <laughs> so here with Chris and Amanda, they picked up their Road King special from me. What's it been, like a year ago, guys? Exactly, like a year and five days, I think. Yeah, the fifth, I think, is when I picked it up. And right? they, they rode up the whole coast of California all the way home to Seattle, Washington area. How are you guys liking it so far? What's the one year review on it's the Road King? It's great. We our only regret really is that we just don't ride it enough. That's that's, a, I, that's acceptable in my yeah. book. But it's so special in our hearts that we park it inside the house. Dude, Chris is a legend. He sent yeah. me pictures. They parked their bike. I'm gonna get run over here. They parked their bike inside their house. Yeah. Well, I say they, but I should say Chris because maybe that's not entirely Amanda's decision. But yeah, that's heated storage. And when I wake up in the morning, it's the first thing I see, besides Amanda. You know. <laughs> It's the second thing to see, second, right, Chris? Yeah. But she's usually <laughs> up before me, so. What about the other picture I showed you, Matt? About the the picture of us at the camper. Yeah. Once again, they they uh, they brought their camper here and uh, parked their bike right outside the back of their camper. So the first thing you saw in the morning was the bike. I have priorities. Amanda, how you liking the back seat? Um, it's good. This new Mustang seat that we got is I, I'm giving it rave reviews. Yeah, it is comfortable. Yeah. Perfect. We did yeah. that in the suspension and it's nice. Yeah, the rear suspension really made a big deal. You guys did Legends in the rear? Yep. Yep, the Revo A. It's so much smoother right on the back. So. Right on, right on. Yeah. We cool. like it. Well, happy to hear, guys. Very happy to hear. The biggest and definitely the most memorable hike we went on was called Trail of the Cedars. And Trail of the Cedars had another trail that branched off called Avalanche Trail. And Avalanche Trail led into what's called Hidden Lake. It's about a four mile hike round trip, which isn't too bad. We weren't really looking for like a really long hike, especially with packing around all of our motorcycle gear. But this trail was pretty easy. And like I said, on the second day, it was raining quite a bit. So we decided to favor more of the hiking as opposed to the riding the motorcycles.
but the hike into Hidden Lake was incredible. The scenery was amazing. The Hidden Lake looked like something you'd see straight out of a travel magazine. It's almost like this small aqua body of water was taken from somewhere else and transported to this remote area in the mountains. It was definitely the most serene experience we had on this trip. So we just arrived at Avalanche Lake and the water is probably some of the clearest water I've ever seen. You got a bunch of waterfalls coming in off the cliffs and stuff. This is like the raddest place ever. So it was about a two mile hike in and yeah, you're basically rewarded with like one of the coolest, just like natural lakes coming in off of the waterfalls, like in this bowl, like this valley that the mountains make. Avalanche Lake, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Road to the Sun right now, day two, and we stopped off at a landing here, and it's overlooking Heaven's Peak, is what it's called, I believe, and this is just a really rad overlook. It's one of the tightest switchbacks on this road, going up Road to the Sun, and there's like a place where you can stop off and you know, check out the scenery. But in the background, like I mentioned, that's Heaven's Peak there, it's almost 9,000 feet, and the fall colors are out, and this place is beautiful. The first day we were up here, it was kind of cloudy and stuff, but today the sun came out, so yeah, we lucked out today. We got the three bikes out here, Rogue Glide Limited, and then the Road King Special. It turned out to be a good day. When we left uh, the Airbnb this morning, it was raining and cloudy, but this place seems like the weather changes like every 30 minutes. So it's sunny and nice one second, it'll be raining the next second but we've had pretty good luck with the weather, so it's been pretty nice. Eating snacks out of the tour pack? Oh, yeah. it's, it's not a tour pack, we this call is it the snack pack. Snack pack. The, sna <laughs> <laughs> the snack pack. We call it the snack pack, yeah. I love it. Amanda and I carried a large pizza in there one time and it tasted even better. <laughs> I think you could put three or four of them though. Do you have a heater in there, like keep it warm on your way home from the pizzeria? I need to add that. I was going to say, you could add that. Can, add can you order that for me, Matt? Does Harley make one? A I think tour we, pack should, we should invent it and sell it to Harley, I think. A pizza, pizza oven. heater? Yeah. <laughs> pizza oven. It's all about the extended and snack And then put like packs, a little though. Domino's thing on the back. <laughs> The road to the sun was easily one of the most epic motorcycle roads I've ever traveled in my life. Being out in nature, especially in areas that have such large, vast, incredible amounts of scenery, elicit a type of emotion or feeling that you can't get any other way. It's like the same feeling I get when I'm snowboarding. The human and nature connection just has a mind-clearing effect. You combine that with the visceral feeling of riding a Harley Davidson, the mechanical feel of a living, breathing engine beneath you, the two of them together just creates a synergistic feeling that can't be produced in any other way. The road to the sun definitely gave us some of the most beautiful vistas and landscapes that I've ever witnessed on the back of a motorcycle. The road, although pretty narrow and windy in some places, was very well maintained. And on one side of the road, it was almost like you had these stone ramparts as a guardrail. I can't even imagine the time and effort that went into building a road like this. Up and through the mountain ranges, over one mountain, extended on top of a neighboring mountain. I can honestly say I'm not very well traveled, but I can easily say that Glacier National Park is in the top three most beautiful motorcycle roads I've ever been on. The only two roads I can think of off the top of my head that might rival it is the Yosemite road that I did recently and the road to Hana in Maui, Hawaii. The road to the sun continues to travel upward to a place called Logan Pass. On the way up, you're met with hundreds of small waterfalls peeking through the clouds at every turn. There's a wall called the Weeping Wall that is basically a low volume waterfall cascading right onto the highway. There's one really popular turnout several miles before you get to Logan Pass where the road widens and there's room for several cars to park. We decided to stop off to take a few photos and have some huckleberry pie. I haven't really had huckleberries much in my life. There's no reason I would, but it turns out in Montana, huckleberries are a locally grown fruit 
fruit. You can find them growing naturally alongside the road in and around Glacier National Park. It seems like every restaurant that we stopped off at had their own special dish that included huckleberries. Huckleberry hot wings, huckleberry pie, huckleberry chicken, you name it, they had huckleberry everything in Montana. Guys, just just dive in. I like the <laughs> You're going with the crust? I think I'm going with the middle. I'm just separating. I want to pull a piece right You're out. You're just gonna. I'm just yeah. I'm gonna try to pull my piece out. Uh, <laughs> You're just going for a bite. I'm whole piecing it here. You gonna get this, Matt? Look at this. Oh, the separation. My God. The separation. Oh, yes. <laughs> Heavenly. <laughs> Dang. She got a whole piece, you guys. Oh, oh my gosh, look at this. Making oh, that pie look good. I don't know. She just has all kinds of resources that... Oh, this oh, is going to be a sweater. Sweater. Oh, not on, not on the jacket. Not on the jacket. Not on the jacket. It's oozing. Oh, all right. man. <laughs> You're mad that it just eat it right out of there, huh, I'm honey? Right out of here. That's kind of not We're very... Okay. That's not sanitary for sh for sharing. Like, pull the whole piece out. <laughs> We're family. We are family. Ow. <laughs> oh my God. Here, honey, do you want a bite? Oh my God. Uh, I'd rather pull the whole piece out like Amanda did. Are you sure? Here. I'm 100 percent positive. Oh. Chris is eating it like a taco over there. Yeah. It's built to hold yeah, itself in. It's like when you get the Costco pizza and you fold it over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a calzone. <laughs> wow. Oh. Do it like Chris does, like a pita. I don't understand that. He's holding it upside down. You're doing, it, You're like doing it like a pita. <laughs> big bite, big bite. No! Oh. oh What's the filling on the side? <laughs> oh, that was just good technique. Oh. That was good technique. He's got skills to pay the bills. This isn't his first time, guys. Oh! oh. Did my piece just fall? No, this is a lot of huckleberry, though. Yeah, uh, get in too much filling, it's almost too much. Oh. Oh, huckleberry. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, huckleberry. Oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, mama. Oh, I dripped one. I got. I got baby wipes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Barry on the R6. Mm. Go ahead. Dude, there's no prettier place to eat huckleberry pie. Look at this. So majestic. Made it up to Logan Pass, which is one of the highest altitudes that visitors can stop off. There's a ranger station up here. There's also two really popular hiking trails as well. One of the hiking trails was closed due to bear activity, so we got the inside scoop from one of the rangers at the station. Oh, okay. So the bears that were causing me problems mm -hmm. came back and okay. they're still causing. It's a sow and two cubs. Oh, okay. And apparently people were 
not giving her any room while I was gone, mm -hmm. and she started uh, showing aggressive behavior, okay. which is not good. Yeah. Because they weren't giving her any peace. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. They weren't leaving her alone. So if this yeah, well, is the other thing is like a door, right? So when we get on this boardwalk. And we mm -hmm. get our cameras out, all of us. Me yeah. too. Yeah. You start doing this, mm -hmm. you forget that there's, you know, the, the space around you. And, the, and when the bears are yeah. just trying to go through, you got to make a doorway somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Just people make a wall. Oh my. Yeah, hundreds. Yeah. Wow. And everybody's with their cameras. And you know, the bear can come straight at them. But when you got you got you got your face in a camera, you're not paying attention. You're just getting those great shots. Yeah. I know how that is. So I'm I know that. So I mauled, It's not one of those things it. I get mad about. It's yeah. just that you know people. Quit thinking, then they get excited, and yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. that's just the way Makes it is. Sense. So we couldn't do Hidden Lake Trail, which is kind of a bummer because it's one of the most accessible and it's one of the most picturesque that the park has to offer as well. But that's okay because right across the street we had Highline Trail, which is a really cool trail that was on the edge of a cliff that made for some pretty epic shots. Oh, it's like That's gonna go touch. shower in it. I have no thought that we would Oh boy. This is not going as planned. <laughs> oh my gosh! This How was it? The Highline Trail is really long. We didn't even get close to the end. We probably only went in about a half a mile at the most. We weren't really looking to do a big long hiking day. The priority, of course, was seeing as much as we could from the motorcycles. So we just went in a little ways, got a taste for it, and went back out. Continue to follow the road to the sun back down the mountain range. It was just as good going down as it was coming up. As we wound our way down the canyon pass, we were met with St. Mary's Lake. Once again, we were met with beautiful windy roads traveling along the St. Mary Lake. We decided to stop for a second and catch some views. Road over Highway 49, which was kind of a fun, unexpected road. Very windy. There's a couple lakes down there, like in these bowls that were created by like the mountains and the, the valleys. So now we're at, I think it's called East Glacier Lodge. And we weren't planning on stopping here, but we saw it and we thought, why not? Let's check it out. So we're gonna go in and see if there's some food or something like that and grab a bite to eat. We kind of skipped lunch, so. Yeah, we're all starving. So I'm gonna jump in here and see what's up. Call each other. Ladies need to make a call. Oh, oh privacy doors? Man, it the, works. That's the door. Well, of course it works. It works. Amanda, close the door. Coming out of the lodge, just got done with some dinner. Now we're gonna head back to Whitefish. We'll probably be riding in the, in the dark. It's probably gonna get pretty cold, but 
you know, hopefully we don't have any problems with running into wildlife or anything. This lodge is huge. It's probably built a long time ago. But yeah, you just don't see things like this very often anymore. Pretty rad, very old school. Definitely a cool lodge though. If you guys are going to Glacier National Park, check out, we're on like the east side of Glacier National Park. You got the lodge here, pretty cool. After dinner, we picked up Highway 2 again and found our way going west back to West Glacier. We got to enjoy the sunset on the open highway as we threaded the needle through the pine trees. We had an epic three days of riding motorcycles and hiking the trails. We had one interesting gas stop on the way back where things quickly escalated and a dance party broke out. It's funny the things that happen at gas stations late at night when you've had a long day. Honestly, this is one of those trips that I never planned on doing this year. Our original plans for Tahoe were canceled. Glacier National Park ended up being our backup. Personally, I think it was fate because I know for a fact the trip ended up so much better than it would have had we gone to Tahoe. I knew Glacier would be amazing, but honestly, I wasn't anywhere near prepared for exactly how awesome it was gonna be. Glacier National Park will always be one of my favorite places to ride. Maybe it's the incredible mountain ranges. Maybe it's the hundreds of hidden lakes tucked away in the woods. Maybe it's the glaciers carving out the sides of the mountains and shaping them in all unique ways. Maybe it's the good times that I'll always remember riding with some of my best friends. Whatever it may be, there's only one thing I know for sure. It's best experienced on two wheels. Special thanks to Harley Davidson Motors Company and Eagle Rider Rentals. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing.